All right, ladies and gentlemen, how are you guys doing on this Wednesday, February the 26th, 2020? I hope you're having a killer week so far, as always, and I want to welcome you once again to another episode of Music of Destruction right here on YouTube. Yes, I know I've been absent from the platform for a while. Uh, I didn't upload any videos last week except for the interview with Texas Voodoo Stomp, which went very, very well. And if you want to check out that interview with Texas Voodoo Stomp as well as the rest of my band interviews, click the annotation right up there in the corner of the screen. should pop up there for you guys. As well as if you missed any videos last week, they will be up there in the corner of the screen as well. Thank you so much for your support here on YouTube. Now you guys know that YouTube is just one of my many goals and aspirations, so got a lot of other stuff I'm working on, like my business and myself, etc. Anyway, by special request from my good buddy Gail of Shadows of Death Records, today I am having a look at an absolute 80s metal classic. Now this might be a band that a lot of you might know about, but I doubt it because I'm pretty sure that this band is pretty underrated in the metal community as I don't hear a lot of people talking about them. Yes, we are having a look at the 1985 classic from Los Angeles, California's Tyrant with Legion, Legions of the Dead. Sorry. Now, LA's Tyrant was formed by bassist Greg May in Pasadena, California. Now, in 1978, Greg found... Greg formed a cover band in high school, which included Richard Funtes on vocals, Tony Ramirez, Gary Chris, Bill Stremel on guitars, and Phil Hillick on the drums. Now, by 1980, Greg had been asked to play with such groups as Metallica, Wasp, Armored Saint, and Warlord, just to name a few. I mean, that's pretty fucking killer when you think about it. It really is. Uh, guitarist Rocky Rockwell's previous band, Visions, ironically featured Tim Gaines of Striper. Pretty cool. Rocky was one of the first guitar players to also have an endorsement deal with Charvel Guitars other than Eddie Van Halen. What a tremendous honor there. One time filling guitarist included Anthony Romero who was in Bloodlust. So that's pretty cool. Now in 1982, the two recruited Greg's brother, Glenn May who was a two-time high school All-American football defensive end to replace their previous singer, Doug Anderson, who had lead vocal and frontman requirements at the time. Doug also played guitar and looked like Peter Frampton, apparently. Greg explained, however, that when he brought Glenn in, it just clicked for them. Drummer Rob Roy ended up rounding out the group who appeared on Metal Massacre 3 in 83 and Legions of the Dead in 85. Previous drummers have included G. Stanley Burtis, Too Late to Pray in 88, and Tom Meadows, King of Kings in 1997. Now the lineup at this time on this record in particular was Glenn May on vocals, Rocky Rawwell on lead guitars, rhythm guitars, and acoustic guitars, Greg May on bass, and Rob Roy handling drums and percussive duties. Great lineup there. And if you're new to the channel, guys, please hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell so you don't miss anything. You can join the Facebook group. We're up to almost 400 members already, so thank you very much. Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Music of Destruction. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. All you got to do, search Music of Destruction. Very easy to find me on those platforms. If you want to show your support on Patreon and get access to exclusive podcasts and perks for the channel, Go to patreon.com forward slash music of destruction. My newest episode of The Seed, number 18, The History and Conclusion of the History of Black Sabbath, part three is up there right now for you guys, so make sure you check that out. Next episode will be airing March 9th, 2020, as I'm trying to do these every two weeks for you guys. I think I'm going to cover the history of Motorhead in the next series, as that's one of the most essential bands in metal. Then we're going to follow up with Likely Judas Priest, and Iron Maiden. So lots of great stuff coming up on the podcast for you guys. Thank you for your support on the Patreon page. Now, Legions of the Dead opens with the absolute epic sounding classic Warriors of Metal. And I'm instantly taken back to my childhood here. Now, while my dad didn't have anything by this band in particular, he did have other bands within the traditional metal genre. And that's exactly what you get with this record with some power metal thrown in for good measure. Now, 
the operatic vocals will take you back to the glory days of Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and possibly even some deal thrown in for good measure. That's what I'm hearing in this. And guitar riffing and drumming electrifies you and will make you feel alive and triumphant in so many ways as this album is very loud, powerful, and impactful on all of your senses and your soul as well. Killer fucking stuff. Guitar riffing is top notch as I said and the emotions are definitely ones of frustration and the desire to escape the mundane realities of life using heavy metal as the means to free oneself from the clutches of the slavery of society's pressures and pain. Great opener to an absolute 80s metal classic with this one. Next up we have Fall Into the Hands of Evil and we are taken into a ride straight into the loss of a loved one with this track with lots of, lots of emotions of pain and falling in love perhaps with the wrong person as there are lyrics here that touch on a woman being evil and deceitful. Obviously that's what this track's about but it's got a lot of classic metal riffing and drumming that gets you instantly pumped up and feeling good despite the somber tonality of the lyrics and emotions. Uh, it's got some great lead sections and rhythm sections here that instantly create those memorable moments that you never forget on a metal album. And that's one of the standout things about this, this, uh, this fucking band. Glenn May's vocals are so diverse as well that they are literally in tune with the guitars and the drumming on this track. In fact, that could be said about the whole fucking record. There's a lot of incredible talent that's also on display on this classic record to be noted as each musician is at one with their craft and place on this record and it definitely shows no slouches here very impressive song here as well next up is the battle of armageddon what we are treated to here is an absolute epic balls to the wall metal classic of soaring guitar riffs bass drumming and vocals from glenn that will make you instantly want to headbang and pump your fists high in the air. That's what I was feeling during this whole record. Just made me feel good and alive and triumphant in so many ways. And I'm really reminded of Iron Maiden, Priest, and Motorhead throughout this entire album, as I said, that it's not even funny. And I can definitely tell that a lot of their influences came from these bands, and you'll hear it as well. This is a searing, scorching, heavy metal classic with some absolutely insane guitar lead sections. Now one thing I also wanted to point out here is the production. This is how you do metal right, and this is what a metal album should sound like. As it's not overly clean and not overly raw either, but it's kind of right in the middle that give it that large auditorium type feel where you can just picture everyone in the crowd screaming and cheering as their metal heroes take the stage. That's just some of the feelings that this album invokes, and there's a lot of genuine emotion and passion to be found here throughout the album as well. This was a time in metal when it wasn't about the money or marketing. It was about passion and determination to turn your music into something that created memories and good times in people's lives so that they could escape the bad times and have a good time. And I think Tyrant were really focused on that during the recording of this because you can hear it in the music. You can hear that freedom and that triumph that this music invokes. And this is metal about freedom and rebellion, and it works so goddamn well because they themselves were truly about these principles and concepts when they recorded it. Great song here, and you can definitely feel that authenticity. Next up is Legions of the Dead, and it, and it opens with what you think is gonna be a ballad before it kicks into full metal ass-kicking intensity with some really awesome double bass drumming and intense soaring guitar riffs that once again give that feeling of power and triumph. But this one is a trip right into hell with lyrical themes of leaving the world behind and joining hell's legions where nothing but freedom and good times await you. That's what I'm interpreting in the lyrics and I think this is a song all about the freedom that one craves from society and life itself. Now the term legions of hell could very well be alluding to all of the metalheads gathering in their own personal paradise where no one can bother them anymore. That's what I'm hearing here. The guitar riffing and drums and bass are absolutely top notch on this song as well. As it's the longest song on the album clocking in at over 7 minutes so quite the lengthy listen but one that'll keep you coming back to this record for sure. Did I mention Glenn May's vocals? Yeah, he just destroys everything on this track with his incredible operatic vocal range and harmonic, almost screaming, but not quite. And it's a really unique vocal style that definitely stands out from many other vocalists around the same time period. Another absolute metal classic here as well. 
Next up, we have another epic electrified old school metal classic with the song Listen to the Preacher, which is filled with some devastating guitar leads, drumming, and vocals. One thing I wish was a lot more prevalent in the album's overall sound, though, was the bass guitar. It's quite buried in the mix, and I wish it was a lot louder, to be honest with you guys. But it is there, and it doesn't stand out as much as I'd like. However, the bass lines on this album are amazing and lend themselves to create that thunderous impact that line up with the drum work so incredibly well. Now this track is all about the indoctrination and brainwashing of Christianity and the apparent evil of Satan. Pretty impactful song here as well. Next up is another classic with the song Night of Darkness, which is this galloping metal epic that sounds like an ancient battle lord that is obsessed with slaughtering everyone on the battlefield and that's exactly what the lyrics are depicting here as well and these fantasy elements find their way into the instrumentation and it works so good that this could almost be a power metal song and it definitely has a lot of these elements intact but that can be said about the whole album and it's something that this band is really damn good at incorporating into their sound overall so very classic track absolutely killer stuff Next up, we have my personal favorite on the album with Through the Night. And this is another rock and roll heavy metal driven classic that goes straight to the heart and makes you want to get up and headbang your ass off. It's powerful, it's epic, it's enchanting and instrumentally astounding as the leads and electrifying riffs will make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. I mean, that's literally what they did to me. I mean, really, what the fuck happened to metal where are all the bands like this and i know there's a resurgence right now of the new wave of traditional heavy metal and the new wave of thrash metal but honestly what happened the 80s was such a great time for metal and i know a lot of you people out there are going to call this dad metal like that's a bad thing uh you guys are missing out on some incredibly good music if you don't check out stuff from the 80s because this is where it all began and you cannot forget about that Bands like this are the reason that the bands you t are the reason the bands of today that you love exist, guys. And I honestly think that this is a time period that will never be captured again in metal. Anyways, let's listen to this beast of a classic right now on Music of Destruction. Enjoy. <laughs>
And we are back. And guys, yeah, as I said, there was something truly special that the 80s had that made so many great bands. And it boggles the mind when you think about just how many bands were out in the 80s and the climate that this music created with fans. I mean, fans from everywhere around the world would travel tens of thousands of miles to see their heroes on stage. And that's something that I don't really think exists anymore because of technology streaming from YouTube and everywhere else. It just seems like people don't really want to go to concerts anymore. I know there's a lot of fans that do, but more often than not, a lot of people are just lazy and don't want to watch concerts. I don't know, that's just how I feel. But don't ever expect me to praise these new garbage bands because it's just not going to happen. I don't really care about the new stuff that's out there. I'm more about the old school, man. This is how it is. Killer track. Next up are the two closing tracks with Sacrifice and Time is Running Low. And these round out the album very nicely and are just as epic, mind-blowing, loud, powerful, and classic as the rest of this record. More of the soaring riffs and enchanting, captivating melodies and lyrics continue with these two tracks. Sacrifice is a nice, slowdown-driven ballad that captures emotions of melancholy and sadness that effectively draws you into its emotional atmosphere. Now, Time is Running Low is a closer that's a balls-to-the-wall power metal epic that will leave you charged up and full of life by the end of this album and is another timeless classic. Overall, guys, this is an essential 80s classic that every metalhead needs to own. Final verdict for Tyrant's Legions of the Dead is going to score an 8 out of 10 and get the horns. Make sure you go out and pick this up. If you're a fan of classic metal, you need to fucking own this because it's absolutely awesome. Shoutouts and thank you time here on Music of Destruction, Shadows of Death Records. Gail, thank you for working with me. Go check out his label, shadowsofdeathrecords.com forward slash list hyphen to hyphen music. Check out all the great bands. He just recently signed Sagrado. You can check out my interview with Sagrado right up there in the corner of the screen if you want to check that out. Great fucking band, ladies and gentlemen. Honored to interview them. They're going to be coming back to the channel after they release their new album through Shadows of Death Records. I'll let you know when that happens. Going to be reviewing it as well. Also, shout out to Terry Marquez. Thank you so much for everything you do for the channel, Terry. She manages the Pissing Razors in Texas Voodoo Stomp. Going to be interviewing Pissing Razors again once their new album comes out. And Texas Voodoo Stomp's Welcome Back Anytime. Going to be awesome to interview those two bands once again, so thank you, Terry. Also, a shout-out to Anthony, Chris, and Mop of Heavy Metal Networks. Check them out on YouTube. They have a killer band, Diabolic Intent, Old School Death Metal. Going to be reviewing their new album coming out this year at some point and interviewing them as well. Going to be awesome. Also, channel shout-outs here to Acid Metal, King of Swords, Backwoods Metal, Farley's Nerd Cave, and Josh of Mortiside. Once again, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. Have yourselves an awesome night and stay fucking metal. Cheers, everybody. Mm -hmm.